Hello and welcome back to Astronoscope Workshops. Now, um, I've been spending some time making um, this spectroscope um, slit thing and, uh, and this is the case for the spectroscope slit which is going to go in here. Um, and I've made the, the, the way that this uh, is going to mount the telescope is um, using an, the, the same uh, style as for an eyepiece. So the eye, eyepieces are an inch and a, a quarter. Um, the actual barrels of them, are, that's the barrel from one. They're an inch and a quarter and that's the, what goes into the eyepiece holder. So what I've made is a, I've made the actual um, inch and a quarter eyepiece tube with a flange which is going to be screwed onto the back of the other end of this case, so it's kind of basically going to go on there, a bit like that. Now, this is a sort of a two-part build. I turned the collar side and then I turned this side, but then I realised that I've got to put the thread on here now, which means that I've got to clamp the workpiece uh, around the tube which I've already finished, or um, I mean, I could probably just do a skim cut on that because it's a, it's absolutely bang on an inch and inch and a quarter. Whereas uh, when you measure most eyepieces, they're ever so slightly under. Um, I think that one measures, yeah, that measures um, one, two, um, one, two, four, five. Um, whereas mine measures, of course, absolutely bang on. Um, 1.25 or one, one, one inch 250 thousands whereas this is um, 245 thousand so it's about five thou under so it's possible I could just do a skin cut on there but quite often I do quite a lot of work on not only uh, my own parts but other people's like eyepieces and things like that for making adapting them so sometimes you have to mount an eyepiece in um, or an eyepiece tube to, to shorten it or whatever. So I'd really like a collet that would allow me to hold on to this, not only relatively accurately, but also without marring the, the actual surface, because I've got a reasonable, as you can see there, a reasonable uh, finish on the on the tube, um, which which makes them you know slide into the um, telescope um, eyepiece quite well. So I'm going to make a collet, which I can not only use for this project, but for um, other projects as well. Now, you can't get a 5C collet in an inch and a quarter, they only go up to an inch. I think you can get them slightly over an inch, but you certainly can't get them inch and a quarter because the actual draw tube is about an inch and a quarter, I think. So um, that's not going to happen. What I'm going to do is make a, basically make a sleeve, um, which is bang on um, an inch and a quarter. And then I'm going to run the slitting saw down three sides, almost all the way through. And then I can put that into my three jaw chuck and I can squeeze down onto this tube and, and then that'll hold it as if it were a collet. Now, it, it, it'll only be as accurate as my, my um, three jaw, but what I was thinking of doing is on the collet is marking one, two and three. So I get the position of the collet in the three jaw chuck the same each time and maybe that will help increase the accuracy. Um, I'm not really sure. Uh, I know that you can get things called stepped collets, um, 5C step collets, which allow a 5C to draw in on, on something which is externally bigger than itself, but I'm not entirely convinced that that would do. I suppose it might work, but I think this is a simple and cheap, uh, cheaper solution anyway, and I'll give it a go and see if it works. And it'll certainly do the job for what I want it for here and if I can make it useful for doing other work as well then that's all, all well and good. So I'm going to try and find a piece of tube which, which this is almost right so I don't have to do too much boring because uh, this was made out of a piece of solid two inch bar and there's an awful lot of material to remove there. Uh, in fact it's all over my floor still. <laughs> I was clearing it up. See you in a moment. Right so inch and a quarter I'm going to need um, to measure um, the bore. So this is my uh, more and right uh, bore gauge set. So inch and a quarter. That one there is not quite big enough, so it's going to have to be this one here. That will take us to inch. That goes from. 
just about an inch and a quarter, so that's an inch and a quarter there. Right, so I've got a piece of, of tube, just um, I've just basically just faced it and uh, at both ends and, and chucked it up. Um, I've marked on the actual, um, let me just um, show you that, hang on a minute. Um, on the top of the lathe there's a zero mark there, which is something to do with the way that the uh, uh, the, the chuck was made when the jaws were um, assembled, the ground into the, the, the set, the zero, um, is the, this is the um, the bit where it was tightened and therefore it's ground square from that point. But anyway, that's a, a reference mark on the chuck. Uh, obviously these are numbered one, two, three as well, but I've just put a zero on there because that's where I'm going to line my zero up um, when I when I, when I finished. Um, so the um, I'm just going to uh, bore it out to uh, a nice a nice uh, sliding fit onto inch and a quarter, and then I will we'll go and slit it. I'm just using this. Uh, I don't know if you can see that from where you are, but this nice new uh, uh, boring bar which I I picked up at the Auto Jumble, which is a very very nice, um, um, very posh boring bar with through coolant. Uh, with through coolant on it, not that I've got through coolant, but if I ever wanted to do through coolant, that's a nice feature. It's a nice long bar as well because here I'll show you. Um, it's a pretty long bar. Um, all the barring bars that I've got are shorter than that, but this is pretty long, and you can squirt in uh, coolant from this end. What's interesting is that the swarf I was using it uh, um, when I was making the other piece that I showed you earlier, and um, right the, the hole where the um, where the through coolant comes out, which is just about there. Interestingly, the swarf managed to find its way up there and started pouring out the other end of the of the boring bar, which is quite funny. It's a shame I didn't get a video of it because it's quite comical. It may well do it again um, when we're going to do, when we're doing this. But right, so I'll um, I'll move the uh, camera to uh, that position there, and hopefully you can we can see uh, some of the action there. And um, we need to bore this out to inch and a quarter. I'm not quite sure where we're at at the moment. In fact, that's the first thing we probably need to do is just uh, do a quick uh, measurement on, on this. Uh, well, this is probably lower than, smaller than an inch, which it is, because this starts from an inch, this particular gauge. So we've got to come out uh, a reasonable amount before we can get that gauge even in. So let's just measure what, we're, what it's at at the moment. yet. Mm. I had it for an inch and a quarter so I have to wind it quite a lot in but we may as well see where we're starting from. So starting from about there which is about an inch. Um, yeah just over an inch. So uh, we've got um, at least uh, 200 thou to go. So let's uh, set that going and we'll take off the got the um, so that's the first um, slot done um, I've now got to rotate it um, a third of the way around uh, and do another slot so um, 
what we do is we undo the lock on the dividing head we uh, wind this round 13 times and so we're in this position we're going to end up in this position here but we have to do 13 first so one Thirteen, and let's put the uh, jobby back in, and we go into that hole there, and then we lock her up. Okay, so that's there. That's the next third. So we go ahead and make another cut. Okay. You might get a bit splashed here. Just tend to take it, with these saws, it's tend to take it really easy until until they're actually all the teeth are in. Once all the teeth are in, you'll lose the teeth. I'm really this by hand because I tend to just, I don't know, a little chicken is looking for. It's obviously not a big cut, you can tell by the fine aluminium screw that's coming off. So I don't want it to get too hot, it tends to jam up a bit in the slot. Keep it cool with WD 40. That's the uh, that's what we've ended up with. So we've got the three slots on the other side. What I also did um, off camera, which I didn't say before, is I just took that back edge down slightly because I want the jaws. The jaws are of the of the lather inch and a inch and a uh, half, which comes to just fr in front of the slot there. So I just relieved that just in case um, the jaws. Um, if I had it set slightly forward, it means that the jaws aren't going to squeeze this bit. That bit's going to be slightly lower. So hopefully the squeeze there will hold it all up. I've just got to go and do a bit of deburring and uh, then we'll give it a I'm just going to uh, deburr these slots um, just so that they so they're sharp. Um, and I'm going to use my... Uh, this is an old triangular file, as you can see. Um, and... Um, ground it down to a point at the end and then uh, sharpen these on a stone and uh, makes a really really good scraper in fact it's a, one of the most useful tools I use this all the time for just uh, deburring and stuff like that it's a really really useful tool works really nicely I'll try not to scratch the body um, I'm just going to run that down there like that just take that uh, take that sharp edge off okay so 
full D bird, smoothed out inside, and um, here you go, slides on nicely. Just got to go and see if it works in those blades now. Right, well, I've got it in the um, in the three jaw, and this is my actual part. Now, what I'm doing is I'm sliding it in, um, and I'm just going to leave um, the actual in the surface that I'm clamping on. It clamps nice and solid. It works in that respect. It's it's a nice solid uh, fit. But the only the downside is that there is a bit of run out still. Now, this is um, this is um, 0.01 of a millimeter per division, so that's like half a thou per division, so we're probably about two thou run out there, which is not not too bad, but um, it'd be nice to get it absolutely cock on. So I might put this in the four jaw, but I think as an exercise, it's worked. It's just um, it just needs uh, just needs a little tweak, almost, but not no cigar as they say, um, but uh, nothing that the four jaw can't can't sort out. And in fact, I might just live with that anyway, because a couple of thou on the concentricity of this is sort of here and there. Um, it doesn't really matter because I, I'm going to optically centre the um, spectroscope at the back of here anyway. So, so um, having these two bits absolutely concentric is not really super critical. Not for the for what I'm doing it for. If it were a telescope or something, yes, maybe. But for a spectroscope where I'm where I can centre it on here anyway, it sort of doesn't matter. But um, yeah, pretty pretty pleased with that.